will speak about the chloroalkali industry, the uses of the products, and each cell individually with a simulation. I will stop here and there and explain further or ask maybe questions or not. Click here for sound. The purpose of the chloroalkali industry is to make chlorine and sodium hydroxide by electrolyzing sodium chloride. Hydrogen gas is also produced in the process. During electrolysis, electrical energy is converted into chemical energy. To do this, a power source is connected to two electrodes which are placed in an electrolyte. In the chloralkali industry, the electrolyte is either molten or dissolved sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is better known as table salt. When sodium chloride is dissolved in water, it is called brine or salt water. This is a mixture of sodium and chloride ions and water. The positively charged sodium ions are each surrounded by water and the negatively charged chloride ions are also each surrounded by water. There are three chloralkali cells which use brine as an electrolyte. The membrane, diaphragm and mercury cells. Let us have a listen at what and have a look at this animation of each of these cells. I'm going to start with the membrane cell. The membrane cell is an electrolytic cell. It consists of an external power supply, a battery, two electrodes and electrolytes. The cell is divided into two halves. The two halves are separated from one another by a semi-permeable membrane. Semi-permeable means that it only allows certain ions through. The half cell shown on the left uses brine as its electrolyte. An electrolyte is a solution which conducts electricity. Brine consists of sodium chloride dissolved in water. When sodium chloride dissolves in water, its positively charged sodium ions are separated from its negatively charged chloride ions and each ion is surrounded by water. The battery creates a potential difference across the electrodes. The positive terminal of the battery pulls electrons away from the electrode connected to it, charging the electrode positively. This attracts the negatively charged chloride ions in the brine. When these chloride ions reach the electrode, the battery pulls an electron away from each of them. This converts them from negatively charged chloride ions into neutral chlorine atoms. Neutral chlorine atoms are unstable, so they bond covalently with one another in pairs, forming diatomic molecules of Cl2. This is what we often mean when we refer to chlorine. Chlorine is a dense green gas which bubbles away from this electrode and is collected. Chlorine was formed as chloride ions were stripped of electrons, so we call this half reaction oxidation. Oxidation is the loss of electrons. Each chloride ion loses one electron to change it into a chlorine atom. The electrode at which oxidation occurs is called the anode. In an electrolytic cell, such as this, the battery charges the anode positively. The semi-permeable membrane allows positively charged sodium ions through into the other electrolytic half cell. The electrode in this half cell is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. The battery pushes electrons into this electrode, charging the electrode negatively. This causes water molecules to react at this electrode. The water molecules accept the electrons we say that water is reduced. During reduction, electrons are accepted. These electrons cause water to change into hydrogen gas and negatively charge hydroxyl ions, OH-. These hydroxyl ions are dissolved in water, as are the sodium ions which move through the membrane. 
Sodium ions and hydroxyl ions are therefore present in the solution. We call this a sodium hydroxide solution. The electrode at which reduction happens is called the cathode. In an electrolytic cell such as this, the battery charges the cathode negatively. This is an electrolytic cell. This can be seen by the presence of a battery which is connected to the electrodes. This inputs electrical energy into the cell, forcing a non-spontaneous chemical reaction to occur. The non-spontaneous chemical reaction is the reaction of brine, sodium chloride solution, and water to produce chlorine and hydrogen gases and sodium hydroxide solution. In the oxidation half reaction, which occurs at the anode, chloride ions are oxidized to chlorine molecules with a loss of electrons. In the reduction half reaction, which occurs at the cathode, water is reduced to hydrogen gas and hydroxyl ions as the water accepts electrons. Since the membrane does not allow chloride ions to move through it, the sodium hydroxide produced at the cathode is basically free of sodium chloride contamination. This is an advantage of the membrane cell over the diaphragm cell. Note that in these animations we are only showing one set of electrons and one reaction taking place to make understanding easier. In fact, the reactions take place continuously and electrons flow continuously in the external circuit. Right, so we The membrane go... cell is an electrolytic okay. cell. It consists of an ex Okay. So um, the membrane cell is the most beneficial and the most advanced of these three cells because of the way it was designed. It is environmentally more friendly. It produces more pure sodium hydroxide with a higher concentration of sodium hydroxide with less contaminants in there like chloride ions. Okay, and it takes least energy or electricity to do that. What you need to take note of are the half reactions for the membrane cell and the diaphragm and the mercury cell. We will get back to this afterwards. We now move on to the diaphragm cell. The diaphragm cell is an electrolytic cell. It consists of an external power supply, a battery, two electrodes and electrolytes. The cell is divided into two halves. The two halves are separated from one another by a semi-permeable sheet called a diaphragm. The half cell shown on the left uses brine as its electrolyte. An electrolyte is a solution which conducts electricity. Brine consists of sodium chloride dissolved in water. When sodium chloride dissolves in water, its positively charged sodium ions are separated from its negatively charged chloride ions and each ion is surrounded by water. The battery creates a potential difference across the electrodes. The positive terminal of the battery pulls electrons away from the electrode connected to it, charging the electrode positively. This attracts the negatively charged chloride ions in the brine. When these chloride ions reach the electrode, the battery pulls an electron away from each of them. This converts them from negatively charged chloride ions into neutral chlorine atoms. Neutral chlorine atoms are unstable, so they bond covalently with one another in pairs, forming diatomic molecules of Cl2. This is what we often mean when we refer to chlorine. Chlorine is a dense green gas which bubbles away from the electrode and is collected. Chlorine was formed as chloride ions were stripped of electrons, so we call this half reaction oxidation. Oxidation is the loss of electrons. Each chloride ion loses one electron to change it into a chlorine atom. The electrode at which oxidation occurs is called the anode. In an electrolytic cell such as this, the battery charges the anode positively. 
The semi-permeable diaphragm allows positively charged sodium ions through into the other electrolytic half cell. The electrode in this cell is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. The battery pushes electrons into this electrode, charging the electrode negatively. This causes water molecules to react at this electrode. The water molecules accept the electrons. We say the water is reduced. During reduction, electrons are accepted. These electrons cause water to change into hydrogen gas, H2, and negatively charged hydroxyl ions, OH-. These hydroxyl ions are dissolved in water, as are the sodium ions which move through the diaphragm. Sodium ions and hydroxyl ions are therefore present in the solution. We call this a sodium hydroxide solution. The electrode at which reduction happens is called the cathode. In an electrolytic cell such as this, the battery charges the cathode negatively. This is an electrolytic cell. This can be seen by the presence of the battery which is connected to the electrodes. This inputs electrical energy into the cell, forcing a non-spontaneous chemical reaction to occur. The non-spontaneous chemical reaction is the reaction of brine, sodium chloride solution, and water to produce chlorine and hydrogen gases and sodium hydroxide solution. In the oxidation half reaction which occurs at the anode, chloride ions are oxidized to chlorine molecules with the loss of electrons. In the reduction half reaction which occurs at the cathode, water is reduced to hydrogen gas and hydroxyl ions as the water accepts electrons. Since the diaphragm allows chloride ions to move through it, the sodium hydroxide produced at the cathode is contaminated by some sodium chloride. This is one of the disadvantages of the diaphragm cell compared to the membrane cell. Another is that the asbestos which the diaphragm is made of is an environmental and health hazard. The diaphragm cell is an electrolytic cell. Let it consists... And now the third and last cell that you must take note of is this. The mercury cell is an electrolytic cell. It consists of an external power supply, a battery, two electrodes and an electrolyte. One of the electrodes, the cathode, is made of mercury. This is why the cell is called the mercury cell. Mercury is a liquid metal at room temperature. It is able to dissolve other metals, such as sodium. The half cell shown at the top uses brine as its electrolyte. An electrolyte is a solution which conducts electricity. Brine consists of sodium chloride dissolved in water. When sodium chloride dissolves in water, its positively charged sodium ions are separated from its negatively charged chloride ions, and each ion is surrounded by water molecules. The battery creates a potential difference across the electrodes. The positive terminal of the battery pulls electrons away from the electrode connected to it, charging the electrode positively. This attracts the negatively charged chloride ions in the brine. When these chloride ions reach the electrode, the battery pulls an electron away from each of them. This converts them from negatively charged chloride ions into neutral chlorine atoms. Neutral chlorine atoms are unstable, so they bond covalently with one another in pairs, forming diatomic molecules of Cl2. This is what we often mean when we refer to chlorine. Chlorine is a dense green gas which bubbles away from this electrode and is collected. Chlorine was formed as chloride ions were stripped of electrons, so we call this half-reaction oxidation. 
Oxidation is the loss of electrons. Each chloride ion loses one electron to change it into a chlorine atom. The electrode at which oxidation occurs is called the anode. In an electrolytic cell such as this, the battery charges the anode positively. The negative terminal of the battery pushes electrons into the electrode connected to it, charging this electrode negatively. This attracts the positively charged sodium ions in the brine. When they reach and dissolve in the negative electrode, they are forced to accept an electron each, changing them into neutral sodium atoms. In other words, the sodium ions are reduced to sodium atoms. Reduction is the gain of electrons. The electrode where reduction happens is called the cathode. In the mercury cell, the cathode is made of mercury. The sodium atoms produced by this reaction dissolve in the mercury cathode. Since mercury is a liquid, a pump can be used to make it flow around in pipes. As it is pumped around, it is made to pass through water. This causes the sodium atoms dissolved in the mercury also to pass through this water. Sodium is an alkali metal. The alkali metals are found in the first group in the periodic table. They all float on water with which they react violently forming a metal hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Sodium reacts with water to form sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. This is an electrolytic cell. This can be seen by the presence of the battery connected to the electrodes. This provides electrical energy to the cell, causing a non-spontaneous chemical reaction. This is the reaction of brine, sodium chloride solution, and water to produce chlorine and hydrogen gases and sodium hydroxide solution. In the oxidation half reaction which occurs at the anode, chloride ions are oxidized to chlorine molecules with the loss of electrons. In the reduction half reaction, which occurs at the cathode, sodium ions are reduced to sodium atoms, which react with water to produce hydrogen gas and sodium hydroxide solution. A disadvantage of the mercury cell is that the mercury it uses is a dangerous and poisonous metal. Right, so the mercury cell is the most energy hungry, power hungry uh, process of those three processes. It uses the most electricity. The mercury cell is an electrolytic cell. And it is also the most toxic of the three processes because mercury is extremely toxic, right? Number one, it dissolves any other metals immediately in itself. That's why sodium metal that forms at the cathode can dissolve in it, right? And it is, um, it is highly toxic. What it does, it actually makes you a bit crazy, right? It blocks the neurotransmitters in your brain and you can get mercury poisoning and actually you can become a bit mad from mercury, right? So we now have to look at the uses of the products. We have already looked at that. Sodium hydroxide is made in soap making, water purification, um, and in drain cleaning. While chlorine gas is used to make hydrochloric acid, used to make um, sodium hypochloride, that is used for bleach, and used in PVC to make plastic polyvi polyvinyl uh, chlorides. Hydrogen is used as a rocket fuel. Remember our boy Elon Musk today, don't miss that. And then uh, hydrogen gas is used as an alternative to petrol in hydrogen fuel cells. And it's also a chemical reagent that we use in organic chemistry uh, to make this process 
of hydrogenation possible as you can remember alkenes react with hydrogen gas to form um, an alkane we use this hydrogen hydrogenation process to make margarine haha <laughs> stuff all right so let us have a quick listen to this Soap is made by reacting animal fat with sodium hydroxide. Fat is an ester. It reacts with sodium hydroxide to form glycerol and soap. Each soap molecule has a polar head where the sodium hydroxide has bonded and a non-polar tail. The po I'm going to stop here and basically our time is running out but uh, please go and listen to this it's very important that you uh, go through each of these and understand each process please all right so what i would like to do at this stage is just uh, basically sign off and take you to this again you now should know that the mercury cell has oxidation and reduction half reactions given to you there where chloride ions form chlorine and two electrons and the reduction that happens is sodium because uh, sodium plus actually sodium plus will pick up one electron to form sodium metal mercury is used as toxic the diaphragm cell uh, has chlorine uh, chloride ions forming chlorine gas in oxidation and the reduction half reaction is water being reduced to hydrogen gas and oh minus ions please go and check the position of water versus sodium ions in the electro potential table which will tell you that water would rather be reduced than sodium plus ions because water is present in that solution here exactly the same takes place with the di membrane cell but uh, in the diaphragm cell there's another disadvantage which is the use of asbestos as that um, uh, a semi permeable membrane which is carcinogenic it causes cancer membrane uh, is just all beneficial, uh, all very good. It uses less energy as well. So you should know the use.